This mini lecture on workplace health and safety legislation in Australia is one of a group of lectures provided for the London South Bank University's Occupational Health Nursing degree programme. Hello, I'm Jo Kitney and a visiting teaching fellow at the London South Bank University. As a country known for its sunshine, size, lifestyle, barbecues, beaches, and even with its snakes, spiders, and sharks, there's no doubt that Australia is a great place to live and work. As with any country, Australia does of course have its challenges. These include its sheer size, its differences in legislation, diversity in culture, climate, and commercial operations. These challenges all add colour and vibrancy for managing health and safety, and having trained and worked in occupational health and in health and safety in Australia and in the UK, this mini lecture and information sheet is a great opportunity to take a step back and think about the similarities and differences between the two countries and the way in which health and safety is managed here in Australia. In this lecture, I'll talk about the similarities and differences in health and safety between Australia and the UK, I'll explain the way workplace health and safety legislation and codes of practice are used in Australia and the main duty holders laid down by legislation. I'll then talk briefly about workers' compensation legislation, Australian standards, safety leadership and culture and the health and safety profession from an Australian perspective. There's an information sheet that accompanies this mini lecture, which can be downloaded from the Kitney Occupational Health and Safety website, www.kitney.com. In terms of its size and population, comparing the UK with Australia is like looking at two ends of a spectrum. Australia has a landmass six times larger than the UK, with an, a population of approximately 22,485,000. Compared that to the small landmass of the UK and the population of approximately 60 million. Australia has many of the work activities, hazards and risks that we see in the industry in the UK, such as manual handling, hazardous substances, working with or being exposed to biological hazards, personal safety, computer use, ergonomic issues, fatigue, stress, as well as emerging risks such as nanotechnology. It also has work activities, hazards and risks that are in many respects more unique to Australia, such as remote working, high temperatures, humidity, fly-in, fly-out and camp-based working, mining for resources and of course snake and spider bites. Also similar to the UK, Australia has health and safety legislation laid down by Parliament that requires employers and persons conducting businesses or undertakings to provide a safe workplace and manage hazards and risks associated with work. One of the main differences with the UK is that whilst Australia has an overarching body called Safe Work Australia, which leads the development of policy and legislation to improve health and safety and workers' compensation, Legislation in Australia is laid down individually within each of Australia's eight states and territories. You can see on the following slide these states and territories and their respective regulators. The health and safety regulator in each of Australia's states and territories has its own website and provides copies of the state or territory legislation, codes of practice, details of prosecution and regulatory action, as well as educational materials and guidance. These regulatory bodies also run workshops, seminars and provide training across their own jurisdictions. Similar to the UK, Australia recognises the importance of managing health and safety beyond just compliance with legal obligations. So drivers such as human costs, business costs, as well as the importance of achieving business goals, securing business capability, providing a healthy work environment and having a fit and productive workforce are increasingly being seen as reasons for managing health and safety at work, as well as linking it to other important areas of management. Now, when we look at health and safety legislation in Australia, we see a similar framework to that of the UK. There's an overarching act and regulations which lays down duties and obligations and codes of practice that provide guidance on how to manage hazards, risks and meet obligations. However, unlike the UK, there is common where there is common legislation across the country, each of Australia's, Australia's states and territories has its own regulatory body which lays down legislations, investigates incidents, undertakes prosecutions and provides its guidance and education. 
Harmonising health and safety legislation across Australia has been a major focus in recent years, with a move to adopt a common framework of legislation that was agreed nationally. This drive to harmonise or have similar legislation is particularly relevant for businesses that operate across borders and fall within more than one jurisdiction. At this point in time, six of Australia's eight states and territories have passed the Harmonised Work Health and Safety Legislation 2011, which came into effect on the 1st of January 2012. This legislation gives consistency in health and safety duties, as well as laying down the common principle of risk management and, so far as reasonably practicable, for businesses to manage hazards and risks associated with work. You can see on the slide here the states and territories that have passed the harmonised legislation and these are the Australian Capital Territory, Queensland, New South Wales, Northern Territory, Tasmania and South Australia. Victoria and Western Australia currently continue with their own legislation and codes of practice. There are four main duty holders in the harmonised work health and safety legislation. These are officers, persons conducting a business or undertaking, otherwise known as the PCBU, or the employer, as would be commonly called within the UK, workers and others. Similar to the UK, duty holders may have more than one obligation and duty holders may share obligations. Officers are those with decision-making powers across an organisation, such as the Board of Directors, CEO or Senior Executives, and have a proactive duty of care to demonstrate due diligence in their understanding of legislation, the hazards and the risks of the organisation, to ensure sufficient resource to manage these and to respond to incidents. The person conducting the business or undertaking, or the employer, is responsible for providing a safe workplace, work activities, plant and equipment, for providing training, information and supervision, and for ensuring effective consultation and monitoring of workers' health and the working environment. The PCBU must also ensure that all hazards and risks are either eliminated or managed. It would be fair to say that the UK has a more extensive range of hazard-specific legislation, with Australia relying on risk management to manage some risks which are not yet covered by our legislation. An example of this would be the introduction of the hand-arm vibration regulations in the UK, which Australia at this point does not yet have in place. Workers are obliged to ensure that they take reasonable care of their own and others' health and safety and to follow reasonable directions of their employer. Workers also have the right to cease work that's not safe and are protected against discrimination for raising health and safety issues. Legislation also provides for the role of the health and safety representatives with their rights to represent a group of workers and to enter a workplace and issue improvement notices where the PCBU hasn't taken reasonable steps to manage hazards and risks. One piece of legislation that is not found in the UK but is well established in Australia is workers' compensation. Similar to the work health and safety legislation, each state or territory has its own workers' compensation legislation and its own regulator. This legislation requires employers to be insured for workers who may experience a work-related injury or ill health. Insurance premiums are based on the rating for the relevant industry and the claims experience of the particular business or organisation with cover provided by state or territory approved insurance providers. Workers' compensation is a no-fault system. This means that where an injury or ill health is experienced due to work and the claim is accepted by the insurer, the workers will receive payment to cover sickness absence and costs such as medical expenses and retraining if they can't return to their usual role. Where workers believe the employer is at fault and damages for loss such as pain and suffering, loss of income, etc. are sought, an employee may make a common law claim against their employer. These claims are managed by the insurer and adversarial where employers will look to defend their position with the arrangements they've put in place to meet health and safety obligations paying an important part in this, this defence. Similar to the UK, Australia refers to standards laid down by industry to define practice. These standards may be international as well as Australian. 
An example of this is where companies providing products or services to the international market may become accredited to the Occupational Health and Safety Management System standard OSAS 18001. Australia and New Zealand have an equivalent standard to this, which is called the Australian New Zealand 4801 OCH Health and Safety Management System, which again gives the basis for health and safety management systems here in Australia. There's also a wide range of health and safety standards relating to, st relating to areas such as welding, scaffolding, personal protective equipment and electrical safety. These are often referred to by legislation and used as a standard for management. Across Australia, there's a really strong focus on safety leadership and culture. So in addition to the must-do of health and safety legislation, there is a drive to push health and safety beyond compliance. Australia's got a strong sense of mateship and the culture at work is really important. Health and safety regulators and industry actively promote the roles of leaders through programs such as Queensland's Workplace Health and Safety Zero Harm at Work Leadership Program and through partnerships between the regulator, industry and universities such as the development of the construction industry's construction safety competency framework which laid down the types of behaviours good safety leaders should or would display within the construction industry. A further driver of success for health and safety in Australia is the sharing of information and the use of information technology. With the help of the internet, resources can be provided to remote areas and virtual communities are brought together with a common interest in managing issues and promoting good practice. In regards to health and safety as a profession, similar to the UK, occupational health and health and safety are recognised professions with educational organisations and professional bodies establishing vocationary tertiary qualifications and standards for practice. I would probably say there's a higher presence of OCHealth nurses and physicians within the UK than here in Australia, with occupational health nursing a better rec recognised profession in the UK, whereas in Australia allied professionals such as occupational therapists and rehabilitation and return to work coordinators have a greater presence in the workplace and undertake roles that the occupational health nurse would more traditionally complete in the UK. This demonstrates that while there are similarities in health and safety, there are some differences in the practitioners who manage health safety and related areas at work. My experience of working in health and safety and studying in health and safety in the UK and Australia has shown that whilst the basic principles for managing health and safety are similar, there are some real similarities and differences in how this is approached at a governmental level, within and between organisations, and for health and safety and related practitioners within the workplace. I guess the message from me on these differences and similarities are the need to appreciate there are many different ways of resourcing and approaching health and safety at work, and it's important to be flexible and adaptable the important thing is to focus on the end goal and use the best way of getting there with whatever knowledge and resources are available. So this draws us to the end of this mini lecture where we've looked at health and safety legislation in Australia, its similarities and differences with the UK. We've also looked briefly at workers' compensation, safety leadership and the use of Australian standards. Once again, the information sheet that goes with this mini lecture can be downloaded from www.kitney.com. Thank you.